Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Perhaps it's your first time joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. There's much to pray uh, about and people to pray for. Perhaps you have a special unspoken request. This is a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we pray for our nation. We pray for those who are in leadership. We pray that the word of God, the spirit of God, and the church of the living God can influence the direction of this nation. We also pray for our local community and region that you'll continue to open up great doors of utterance. Father, we also pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. And Father, we want to pray for Sister Brenda Gazande that was injured in a car accident yesterday. We pray that you touch her, strengthen her, and let her have a speedy recovery. Father, lastly, we remember our brothers and sisters around the world. We pray that you'll furnish them with a hedge of protection wherever they may be. We ask all this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, amen. I want to direct your attention to a famous portion of scripture found here in Matthew chapter number 25. We're going to start in verse number one. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Now notice, it's already defining them as being foolish. Why? Because they took no oil in their lamps. Okay? It continues, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wives, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wives and the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open up to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know ye not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Now this is a famous illustration. Matthew chapter 25 gives us three vignettes, three illustrations, three parables of what appears to be post Matthew chapter 24, which is uh, eschatological in its, in its content. And here you have various illustrations that are talking about um, judgment and almost a permanent situation involved in each and every one of these examples here in Matthew chapter number 25. I want to focus here on these foolish virgins. And I simply want to entitle this uh, this morning, Being There being there. And this, this particular uh, parable is so self-explanatory, it really does not um, require a lot of uh, commentary and a lot of explanation. It just, it just says exactly what it means and means what it says. They've already been determined who is foolish and who is wise. The, the foolish virgins, of course, are they that had no oil in their lamps. The wise are considered to be wise because they did have oil in their lamps. But that does not have to mean that it is the end of the story. Let me explain myself. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now, I am told that this is talking about um, an Old Testament Jewish wedding where it was customary 
that they go out to meet the bridegroom halfway at the halfway point at night and required uh, to use lamps in order to find him. However, my question is, if I didn't have oil in my lamp, I would be clinging to people that did have oil in their lamps. Um, if there was anything that I was lacking at any, at any point, I would make sure that I was associating myself with people that did have particular strengths that could match my weakness or did have resource in that particular area where I had want or had some spiritual insight where I had none. I would be drawn to people that had what I was lacking. And here it is, this is important. And at midnight there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. That was an indicator that we need to absolutely be on the move. And that was also be an indicator that I would be following those that were wise. If I had made foolish decisions and maybe I'd come up short at this time, I'm not gonna be going into town to buy something. I'm gonna be sticking with people that had wisdom and had direction, had revelation and understanding and knew exactly where they were going. I continue on. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps and the foolish and the wives. Give me of your oil for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered saying, not so lest there be enough for us and you, but go ye uh, to rather of them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, wouldn't you know it? That while they went to buy more oil, the bridegroom cometh and they go in with him and shut the door. In the hour in which we're living, why in the world would somebody play with their salvation? Why would somebody consider listening to the devil or listening to the world and thinking that the world has something to offer better than what is going on in the church of the living God? I'm not going to try to line up some eschatological overlap on this particular scripture with where we are today, but I think it's obvious that we're at the midnight hour, and it's a time where we should be preparing ourselves for this incredible moment. It's time that we should be working out our salvation with fear and trembling. It's time that we should be removing spots from our garment, perhaps, or um, any of the folding on the garment, any spot or wrinkle or any such thing, any impediment in our soul, any besetting sin, anything that's not right. I think that this is an opportunity that we should be looking at right now and we should be working on ourselves. I'm going to take a little bit different view of these foolish virgins. I'll say, yes, they were foolish for not having oil. But the greatest part of your foolishness is going into town after the midnight cry has already been given. Why would you leave those that did have oil? Why would you leave those that were wise? Why would you leave those that were right with God? And so when I look at this particular passage of scripture, and I understand where the human dynamic is in the day that you and I are living. And I'm seeing people that are contemplating backsliding, that are contemplating going to the world, that are contemplating trading in their salvation. To me, that is the true foolishness. Being there, we should stay with those that are wise, stay with those that have oil, Stay with those that are waiting patiently to take the next move with the bridegroom. And so that's it, being there. There's nothing in this world, I'm gonna tell you the devil is working overtime on young people, old people, everybody in between, trying to persuade us to cash in. And although we get what we want, we lose what we had. It's not worth it. Stay with the church. Stay with those that are wise. 
Stay with those that have oil in their lamp. Stay with those that are having their eyes fixed and their ears attuned for the voice of the bridegroom. Because although you may be empty and you don't have oil, at least you can follow those that are wise and you can enter in as well. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here today. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.